Alright, so now we're going to talk about the motors. So this is a uh, three, a, a two wire 393 uh, strong motor, or big motor, as we call it. And there's four screws at the top that you do um, undo very carefully with a small Phillips head screwdriver. These are really easy to strip. If they get stripped, they're really hard to get out. So please be very careful taking these out and only do it at last resort. But this is how you change the gears because there's three internal gearings we can change here. So if we take those screws out, loosen them up, we can take the top off. We want to take the top off with the screw side on it, not the back. We want to take the side off. And once we look in here, you can see here we have the motor and it is facing down here. There's some more gearing going on down here and then it pops back up here. And if we take these out, we have a little collar. We have the drive shaft part that actually has a square that the drive shaft inputs into. And then we have in the center here, from that middle pin, we have this uh, gear. And what this does is it takes the, the gearing that comes from the back and brings it up from here up to this point here up to our drive shaft, so it connects in kind of like that. And then of course this low collar goes on top just like that. And that and that just helps support the shaft. Okay. So now here we can change the gearing. The default gearing in <coughs> in the 393 motors when you unbox them is a a, a torque gearing. It has more strength than speed. So it spins at 100 RPMs and it has a torque of 1.67 newtons per meter. So this is the stock or torque setting. It spins at 100 RPMs and at 1.67 Noons per meter torque. Okay, so that's these guys, and you can tell it's these guys because if you look at this guy here, you can see it's fairly large. You can see the the I'm sorry. Yes, it's fairly large outward. So from the center of this pivot, it has a lot of metal in between here, and then it has the teeth. And you can tell it's this drive shaft because it's very, very shallow from the teeth to the shaft. And it's hard to see that just how it is. So let's look at the other setting that's available. And this is the the speed setting. So the, the speed setting spins at 160 RPMs. And it has a stalled torque of 1.04 newtons per meter, okay? And that's the speed setting. So as you can see, when you look at this one, there's not nearly as much material from the inside to the outside the teeth. And then if you look at the drive shaft, there's a lot more material right here. So this, just like before, on the other one, meshes up just like that. It goes in the exact same space. The, the two side gear goes in the center and then the shaft gear goes in the left side there. And then of course you will make sure you put your collar back on there. Okay. And a lot of times these are, you can easily get these mixed up about like does this one or this one go with this one. You know, it's, they can easily get mixed up and combobulated. But it's easy when you just compare them directly to each other. So if you look at these guys, you can see that the one left here is much thicker than the one on the right. Talking about this top gear part from the center of the shaft to the outside of the teeth, it's much thicker than the one on the right. So you know that one is the standard speed, it's the torque speed. Okay? And then this one is the speed one. Right. Yes, high speed option. 
Then if you look at these two, you can see that the one on the right has a lot more material, so it would mesh with the gear that has less material. So it goes to the speed one. This one has less material, so it matches the one with the big spacing, which is the torque one. And then if the, these are confusing, if you can at least identify these two, you're, you're in the right ballpark. Because what you can do is you can take whichever one you want. So let's say I wanted a speed setting. I can take this guy, set it down in the middle of the shaft. Okay, make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom there. And then, if I don't know which one to put in there, I can take one, I can drop it in there, and I can spin it. So right now when I spin it, you can't really see it, but if I spin it, that center one doesn't spin with it because they don't actually mesh together. So now if I change that one out for the other one, I can put that one here and spin it and it actually works. So you know that's, that's the ratio they work in. And so that's how you decide what gears to use. So if you're ever wondering about that, you can change those. And if you ever have a problem with your motor and you can't figure out why it's not working correctly, you can try changing this and see if that helps. But if you're having any trouble beyond that, ask someone to help you or if like a, one of the pins is broken or it's cut or anything like that, put it in the broken motor box and then someday we'll get around to fixing all those and then we'll have brand new motors all over again. So all, all this small gear motor uh, thing will make a lot more sense visually once we get into the actual um, get into like gear ratios and stuff like that. So that that's those. So again there's the speed and torque. If you were wondering about that. All right. So then those are the, the two wire. That's the large two wire and then here is the small two wire. So the two wire 269. And the uh, same thing as before, you take these screws out from the top side. Take that out and it's constructed a little bit differently. Now this one you can't change the internal gear. It's only one set gearing. But as you can see they are still metal gears. They have uh, they have all the gearing going on in the back from the motor. And they have this gear coming out from the top that meshes with your drive gear. Okay. And these aren't made to be like interchanged or anything like that, so you only open this like ever. I just want to show you what that looks like. So both of the two wire motors have metal has metal gearing, and that's a big improvement about what they were in the past. Because here, the three wire motors, it's what you'll get sometimes. You'll put your uh, wheel in there and you'll turn it, and you'll hear like a little clicking sound. Okay, when what you should hear is you should hear like a a, a turning motor. Let me see I can demonstrate that for you here. Let me just, that's a good way to test if you shouldn't have this problem. But in the old days, you would take a, a wheel with an axle or something like that. You would put it inside. And, well, I haven't connected those gears yet. Here, let me put these guys in. Put that guy. And then that guy. And if you take this and you spin it. Let me put the top on it. So I don't break anything. There we go. Let's hold that in place for the time being. You take it and you spin it. You can kind of hear the motor turning in there. And that's a good thing. If you came to this guy and you spun this guy. You can kind of hear that motor turning in there. But it's really crackly, okay? So, it just so happens that I I'll open this one up to show you what it looked like inside. And, oh I'm sorry, this guy. Or everything I just said. I, one way to tell if your motors are good or not, you don't really have to do this with the new ones, but with the old ones, you can see this guy, you can hear the motor turning it, that's the 393, and then here is the 269, the smaller two wires. You can hear the motors in there. But then here with the old uh, three wire, the motor modular motor module. You put this in here, you turn it, sometimes you don't get anything. Yeah, you see I'm inside the shaft and everything, you turn it, you don't get anything. So, this was a very common problem in the, in the past because inside they used plastic gearing. And what happens is you can see in here, you can see like this little chip right here, and down there, some on the other side, like that chip right there. Those are all teeth. And you look right down here, that right there, 
this piece is supposed to be a gear. What happened is that there's so much torque on this black piece, this black piece is the, the drive for the axle, that there's so much torque on here that it actually uh, broke all the teeth here. So you can see the drive shaft is turning and the motor could be turning too, but there's no actual connection because all those teeth broke. And that was a very common problem in the past and it had like no strength whatsoever. So these are to be avoided at all costs whenever possible. If this is all we have then you may have to use it. But the torque is very uh, weak on these and you can't really do much with them unless you're doing just a small little manipulation. And then to just put everything back together you just take this each screw and just screw it in with a little Phillips screwdriver. Then another thing you'll find is you'll find uh, three wire servos and what those do is that you tell them to go to a certain position and they go to that position. Okay, but they have very limited range. I think they have like a, a 180 degree range or something along that lines. And we have very few of those and I don't know how often you're really going to use those. Alright, and the 269s, um, they're discontinued. They no longer make these, but if you're interested, they have a speed of 100 RPMs and they have a foot pound ratio of, or an inch pound ratio of 1.6, which is in the same ballpark of the um, uh, high strength motors. So these uh, smaller motors, smaller motor in general, both internally and as a whole. So you'll get less torque out of this than you will on any setting of these. So if you don't need a lot of torque and you can just go with 100 RPMs, non-variable, a lot of stuff, you can go with this guy. But these guys have a lot more options. And something new, sorry I didn't talk about this earlier, but something new is now they have a a turbo speed, which spins at 240 RPMs, but it only has a foot-pound, or a newton meter of torque of 0.7. So, these are the three current ratios they have for these 3 on 3s they can change out. So, you have the stock torque, it spins at 100 RPMs, and has a lot of torque. Or you have the speed, which would span at, what, uh, would spin at 160 RPMs, and a little bit less torque, but still a substantial amount. And then you have the turbo now, which spins really, 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 really fast at 240 RPMs, but it has very, very minimal torque. Very, very weak torque. So, I don't have any of those here in front of me, but uh, as you can see, it went from bigger here to smaller here, so it's even smaller over here, and it went from uh, smaller spacing here to bigger spacing here, so it'd even be a bigger spacing over here. So, we don't have any of those currently, but I'm sure we're going to get some, so that, that's the third set you'll have to worry about. But it works the exact same way, it looks the exact same, so it has this double-decker kind of gear, and then the drive shaft gear that meshes just like that inside the motor. You put the double-decker inside the center, and you put the shaft, or the drive shaft, um, on the outside, put the little collar coupler guy on there, and put the motor on top, and screw down, and you're done. And one nice thing to do is just to help you remember and to help other people remember, is get like a piece of tape or a sticky or something, put it on there, and then write down if it's a a speed, a torque, or a turbo. This one's speed, so I'll just like write speed on it, or whatever. And that way you can tell what the motor is internally geared for before before you put it on something. Because one bad thing that can happen is you can have two motors put together. Like, let's say if you're trying to drive your lift, and you want to make sure you're using two motors to drive the lift so you get more torque. You want to make sure the lift rises at the same time. It'd be bad if these guys were set for torque, and these guys were set for speed. 
or a turbo, and then they'll be fighting each other because they're not going at the same time. One's trying to move faster than the other, one has more torque than the other, slower than the other, and it's just a, a, a bad thing. So if you're having mechanical trouble, you may want to look into the internal gearing of your motors because that can cause a big problem, and it can cause the motors to burn out and then trip the uh, circuit breakers inside of them. So always look at that, and just be careful with stripping these screws.